You once claimed that you have an ability to face unpleasant facts. Is that what you demonstrated in 1984 by drawing an accurate portrait of the future? I think that allowing for the book being, after all, a parody, something like 1984 could actually happen. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-abasement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always, there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. Shalom, Kala Yahawa Bashem Yashai, Bashem Kokodash, the waters my teachers, the apostles, the males of the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect, with the house of David reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Yashurala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about the end rulership of the nation of Edom, that being the biblical name of the Caucasian race. And as we just watched, the author, George Orwell, who wrote the book 1984, mentioned that the world is going in that direction which the, his book depicted, right? A totalitarian state where the government is basically the new god on earth okay and that's where when you look around esau these edomites are trying to take the world with their new world order well let's read this this is isaiah 26 and 10 let favor be showed to the wicked yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness Will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of Yahweh Bashem Yahashai? So this is talking about Esau, even if he was to be given a chance, he would not rule in righteousness, that he would continue to do wickedness. Okay, because right now, not only is he in the land of right of uprightness, which is the land of Israel. But he's also in power, right? He's been shown favor. And what the Lord has done is he's allowed, along with Esau, all the other nations to have their chance of rulerships. Some of these other nations have done better than the others. But right now we're living in the last rulership of the last heathen nation to rule over the world, that being the nation of Edom. And they have ruled this world in wickedness and they have completely destroyed it, right, from the air, the land, the sea, the food, the people's mental and moral compasses are completely destroyed. Doctrine, education, medicine, you name it, it's been destroyed, right? And why? Well, because the wicked are in rulership right now, right? And so much so that what was once written as a fictional story, 1984, has come to a pass where we are living in the state which George Orwell foresaw in his dystopian novel. And the thing is, is a lot of people are unaware of this, right? But the great news is that this isn't going to, to last much longer. And Esau, these Edomites are not gonna prevail in their new world order or bringing forward this Luciferian world rulership upon the earth. This is Job 14 and 5. 
Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So, like I said, every nation has been given a chance to rule upon the face of the earth. And right now, we're currently living in the last rulership of the last heathen nation, that nation being the nation of Edom. But you see, as in this Bible uh, time lapse, let's go to the last two big prophecies that are about to happen, that we're waiting for, right? Right now, for the most part, we're right about here, where the money is about to collapse, right? Literally, it says, you're right here, right? We've got, we're going through the wonders on earth, which the Lord is bringing out, right? We're about to go into uh, Jacob's trouble, right? Where uh, you start having just massive riots and uprising, right? You're starting to see this now with the, the, all these strikes going around. That eventually is going to lead to uh, basically just the crumbling of society, which is going to call for Jacob's trouble to come into a uh, pass. And then you're going to see these devils that are in power declare their new world order. Now, for the most part, they've already done this, but on the low end. But pretty soon, you're going to start seeing they're going to come out straight up and say that they are the new world governments, right? And then they're going to bring out the mark of the beast, which is the RFID, implantable microchip, which is going to go into your hand, or those brain chips, like, for example, Neuralink is working on and whatnot. Well, once it becomes optional, then eventually mandatory, then we're going to see the full onslaught of World War III come to pass. And when this is going on, this is when the Messiah is going to show up. Right? Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, will show up and begin the destruction of all the heathen nations. And this is where you're going to see the, the nukes launch. Right? I just watched the video today where they did a news report showing that Harry Reid had gave testimony that there was a, a chariot who showed up during um, to a Russian base, activated the nuclear missiles, and it was about to launch them, but then eventually the, the chariots disappeared, and and then the uh, the missiles which were activated and that the Russians could not deactivate uh, eventually turned off and everything went back to normal. Well, that was the chariots doing a test run, making sure that they were able to control everything and, and, and uh, so that way when the time does come and they do show up for the great finale that they'll be able to activate these nuclear missiles and basically launch them, right? And then when that happens, then the, the elect and the one-third of Israel are going to be called up and they're going to be taken up into the chariots to watch, well, one, to be saved and then second, to watch the lake of fire, right? Which is uh, explained in uh, Revelations 20 and 10. That lake of fire being America and all these other uh, uh, NATO nations that are also going to be bombed, but mainly here in America, okay? And then after that, the Lord's going to conquer and the other nations are going to go into captivity, right? And that's what this is talking about, right? Because you see, Esau, you cannot go back, extend his rulership one second when the Lord has finally uh, um, has declared that Esau's time is up, that's up. What does the scripture say? Now, you know, until until that time that he that letteth uh, will let, right? Because ultimately the only reason Esau is able to do everything he's doing is because it's by the Lord's will. Because again, remember, Esau, the nation of Edom, is the Lord's battle or, or whipping stick, okay? And he's using them to punish the world, namely us Israelites, okay? But that time is going to come to pass, and this 1984 dystopian future is not going to come to pass. This is Job 20 and 23. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating, right? So when he starts trying to bring forward this new world order he's going to try to bring out the, the cashless society when he's going to try to do all these different things the Lord's going to continue to, to destroy his plans by 
basically throwing monkey wrenches into his, his grand plans, right? We're really starting to see it now when by states uh, trying to outlaw CBDCs, right? You're seeing it as uh, the, us Israelites, we're starting to wake up, share this information. We're starting to consume these devils by the word of the Lord, right? That right there is, is the Lord um, starting to destroy or starting to cast down these devils. And again, ultimately, it's going to come down to the Lord physically destroying them once he shows up. This is Proverbs 24 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. And like I said, Esau's time for rulership has already a, a set time of expiration. As the Apostle Tahar said, they only have a few more months left. A few more months and then they're out of here. Like he said, be it six months, 12 months, 36 months, but it's still months, okay? So either way, I just wanted to share this video. I thought it was interesting seeing that the uh, author, George Orwell, speak about his book and how it relates to today's time. So, um, but again, ultimately showing you how that's not gonna get to that point because again, the prophecies that we have in the Bible that uh, tell us that the Lord is going to save us out of it. So hopefully this video was edifying. I'll keep till the next time. I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahashai, Bashem, Kokor, Dash, the waters, my teachers, the apostles, and the elders, the great millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.